here to break it all down. It's a superstar panel, beginning with Hogan Gidley, a Republican strategist, former communications director for Mike Huckabee, followed by CBS News senior political editor Steve Chigaris here with us. And last and best, we have CBSN <laughs> political contributor, Democratic strategist Linda Tran. Say it with me, also a founding partner of 270 Strategies. Before we start, we should disclose that several employees at 270 Strategies do some work for the Hillary Clinton campaign. However, Linda herself does not because she's here to discuss said campaign. However, we are going to start, guys, with the Democrats uh, and the route. Um, again, this was perhaps like New York, a victory we foresaw, but not by, I mean, he exceeded expectation. And while this sat on the schedule, everybody saw this coming after Wisconsin, what now? Does what is the psychic momentum as our major Garrett discussed uh, this morning? What's the psychic momentum for the Trump campaign now? Well, he already declared himself the presumptive nominee, which is a little premature. Uh, but there's something to be said about what's going on here. And I think if we were looking for panic uh, among the electorate that Donald Trump is on the way to the nomination, we just didn't see it. Yeah. The Stop Trump Movement's memo has not gotten to the voters, if you know what I mean. This guy has received 10 million votes in the Republican primary so far. He has exceeded uh, um, Mitt Romney and John McCain, the last two nominees of the party. He's 2 million votes short of what George W. Bush received in 2000. We could be in a situation where Trump, even though he might not get the requisite number of delegates to clinch the nomination, although it's a lot better, the, the, it's, it's a lot closer, he's a lot closer to that now than he was before these six primaries. Um, he could have the argument that he could have received, he could receive more of the popular vote than any nominee in the history of the Republican Party. I don't know how that argument's going to work on the floor of the convention if you're demanding an open convention and trying to tell delegates, deny the nomination to the man who has received more of the popular vote. Exit polls suggesting a large percentage of people agreeing with you, <clears throat> saying most votes, especially that number, uh, the, nom the nomination should go to him. Hogan, he, we also see now uh, perhaps a disintegration of the Ted Cruz, John Kasich alliance before it ever really got a chance to go. Right. They were already, Ted Cruz specifically, was asking Indiana voters to vote for chaos rather than a candidate. Um, is this now rendering him a Don Quixote tilting at windmills? I think you just showed the video of that fireball coming out of the sky and crashing. That was that was the alliance uh, flaming out before it got started. Look, I think it was ill-timed, it was ill-conceived, and as we see now, it was very poorly executed. Mm -hmm. If they were going to do this, it was going to have to be much more um, pinpoint uh, accuracy to figure out exactly where they needed to go. They were going to have to be more open about it. There was a memo. We all saw it, but it was just clunky. And as we talked about uh, several elections ago, it's so weird to have a conversation and not be for something, but to be against yeah. something. And that's what that's just an inherent goofiness in, in that type of argument. And you're seeing that play out now because Donald Trump is actually picking up steam. He's picking up momentum. He's widening leads. And, and I do want to touch on, yes, he has 10 million votes, more than Romney and McCain. And Romney and McCain had a much um, smaller field and they were less funded. Right? They weren't and as well far funded. more organized. Far, I mean, far more, every right, far single more rule organized, is now being right. over. There were 17 candidates, and a lot of these folks had money. There weren't PACs back then like there are now. So, I mean, Donald Trump is facing this and doing this in headwinds that we've not seen before. It's extremely impressive. I, I want to point out, too, on the alliance. I wonder if there was a miscalculation, a major miscalculation on the part of Cruz uh, and, and Kasich on this, and letting Trump basically run away with these last six contests. Mm -hmm. I mean, Trump did way better than expectations. I think Think got more delegates than anybody thought he was going to get out of the last six contests. And so not only is the momentum now shifted to Trump, but now you're in a situation where uh, you are putting everything into Indiana. This is, I mean, these six states, these are places where Kasich could have pulled delegates away from Trump. Right. Yet they gave up on these six this contests. This is a place where Kasich said, this is my, this is my, this is my, my turf. Pennsylvania. Right he grew up in Pennsylvania. He, it's the neighboring state to the yep. state that he's currently governing. And he came in third place. They ceded everything to Trump here, and now the momentum and is totally shifted. His five delegates were good for a second. That's right, and that's twice now because Cruz said, mine's going to be the South. March 1, I'm taking this thing. Kasich said, it's going to go back to the Northeast mm -hmm. and the Midwest, and I'm going to take those things. Neither one of the anti-Trump folks 
have gotten there. It seems uh, that Indiana, perhaps they'd hoped it might be a sort of Wisconsin part two, might not uh, matter. And so as he pivoted then, Donald Trump last night, mm -hmm. and uh, we heard perhaps the first official salvo in a general election fired Hillary Clinton's way. Uh, if she was a man, she'd get 5%. She only has the woman's card. I, I do actually want to not just hear him say it, but take a look at Mary Pat Christie behind him <laughs> while Plain he Peekaboo. did. Take a look. <laughs> Well, I think the only card she has is the woman's card. She's got nothing else going. And frankly, if Hillary Clinton were a man, I don't think she'd get 5% of the vote. The only thing she's got going is the woman's card. And the beautiful thing is women don't like her, okay? And look how well I did with women tonight, okay? The only thing she's got going It would seem, as we now spot shadow, that's <laughs> either a random roll of the eyes or perhaps a <laughs> visceral reaction to what we just heard. I mean, Hogan, you said last night uh, Ted Cruz and John Kasich may have walked into a right cross with their alliance. Is this, Linda, Donald Trump doing the same in his first official pivot? to well, November? Well, I think he's sending a really clear signal about the kind of campaign we can look forward to in the general. The guy is going to pull no punches. Um, that said, he also knows the numbers. He knows that he's not doing well nationally among women as it is. And so, so, so we might as well just hate throw our really hands There's really no up? downside here in going in a little bit deeper and, mm. and actually maybe firing up some of the folks who probably actually agree with him who are in his base right now. Um, I think it's going to be a problem spot for him as we make the official pivot um, in the next few weeks. But uh, anyways, as a Woman, I'm clearly offended by it. Uh, Hillary Clinton took it in stride and, and actually sort of teed up a, a line for her by saying, well, great, then deal me in. So, you know, they're, they're both playing with it.